we can kind of fully transition into the into the Buccaneers pregame. I, I think an area in, in which and this is a Tampa Bay to give a little bit of a preview, a little bit of a you know build the narrative, build the story for this coming week. I mean, yeah. like you said, this is a big kind of turning point game for the Bears. And to continue on, we were talking about with Robert Quinn. One thing that kind of scares me is watching the Bucks game last week. They really just pounded the ball with Leonard Fournette. And Robert Quinn's been pretty good in the run stop game too, um, and being able to get a few tackles behind the line of scrimmage. I fear a little bit that the Bears are gonna struggle to stop even the run game, and that's just gonna give the Buccaneers too many looks to to quite handle. Um the Buccaneers are opening up at massive favorites, like almost disrespectful um to the Bears. <laughs> I believe they are twelve point um favorites, and I'm not a big wow. sports better, but you know, Anyone that knows anything about over unders and, and and the lines that they are put in knows that being a twelve point dog in an NFL game is that's pretty bad. Um, yeah, it's pretty brutal. So, yeah, so Vegas has the Buccaneers winning big um, in this game. You know how can how can the Bears defense with with the injuries, especially with Robert Quinn? What exactly do you think they should do to, to slow the Buccaneers down? Because, like you said, the game plan going, you know, at full strength was probably just, you know, like you said, make Tom Brady feel old, get some pressure in his face, and hopefully get him on the turf a lot and keep them from moving the chains and and giving Justin Fields as many chances to put the ball in the end zone as possible. But now with that out of the window, should the Bears where the Bears focus their attention to kind of minimize the damage? Uh. Man, you know, the, the problem is we don't have many options, right? Like, yeah. this Bears team is only strong in so many ways, uh, even defensively. And, and right now, really, our pass rush is clearly, um, like, our strongest hand. So I'd like to see a lot of blitz packages. I, I kind of liked seeing us sometimes throw the safeties at them. Um, you know, I, I liked some of these mixed-up looks where, where you're really trying to confuse. The thing is, Tom Brady, you know, he thrives on his IQ. He can read defenses really well. Um, it takes a lot of very smart play calling, um, you know, kind of tricky packages to, to kind of throw him off. And, and he's, even then, good luck, you know, fingers crossed that it works because he's, he's a football genius. So, uh, you know, as tricky as you get, he's probably trickier than you are. Uh, but but I just think outpowering them and 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 hitting them with a lot of speed, you know, getting fast guys after them. So it, it's it's gonna hurt losing Robert Quinn because I think that that would have been, you know, I think that that's man having Robert Quinn and uh, uh, Khalil Mack. How how is I'm uh, sorry to just kind of change <laughs> a little non sequitur, but like, what's the deal with Akeem Hicks? Is he out? Is he in? I actually don't know. I actually don't know his status. Um as of this game. So that could, I mean, that would be potentially he another, was, he was slamming his helmet on the, uh, on the side of the, you know, the sideline. He, when he, when he came out of the game, yeah. Uh, I, it looks like I'm actually looking into it right now. Uh, it looks like it's questionable. They don't really know. Um, and Khalil Mack is also listed as questionable. That is scary. Uh, I feel like he's yeah, questionable Hicks, every week though. <laughs> you know. That's true. He is. But Hicks Hicks had that sack on Aaron Rodgers where he kind of it was like non con no contact he was he was dealing with a groin injury he sort of spun out of it and his leg sort of sp- it swung out to the side and he came away you know gripping his his groin and he uh, apparently was slamming his helmet doesn't sound good so to lose potentially Akeem Hicks and Robert Quinn and with Khalil Mack you know kind of week to week dealing with with little nagging injuries. We could be in some trouble here, and I am starting to gather why we may be 12-point underdogs. Uh, <laughs> I would still pick, you know, in terms of people that know the over and under, I'd still go with the under. I don't think it's going to be that much of a blowout, but I guess there is the potential that it can be, right? Like, you know, they could uh, go up on us by two scores. Uh, also, Tom Brady is having an amazing year. I mean, yeah. some of the games he's he's – he's been having recently are um truly shocking uh to see uh how 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 capable he is this late into his career uh just multiple games with like four and five passing touchdowns is crazy 
crazy for somebody who's 93 years old. Can you believe he's 93 years old <laughs> in his 73rd NFL season? What feels like a it. champion? Yeah, it feels like it, and he's averaging something in like almost the mid 300s uh, as far as passing yards per game. So he's still slinging the football around. It's a very, very tough matchup. Yes. And, you know, defensively, it's going to be tough to slow down their weapons. I mean, I don't even know where you start. You got Mike Evans, Antonio Brown, Leonard Fournette, um, Ronald Jones, you know, Cameron Brait, O.J. Howard. Even though Gronkowski's banged up, they still have good tight ends. So they can really do whatever they want and pick whatever weapon they want to play well that week that's going to to work well against that Bears defense. So that's a little bit of the scary part. I think a little bit on the bright side as far as the Bears offense, they're at least going to have some favorable matchups this week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers secondary. They're very banged up. I don't know the status of Richard Sherman right now, um, but they brought him kind of in on an emergency basis, and even he went down in the last game. So they're they're not extremely healthy back there. So if any week is a good week for Justin Fields and this wide receiver room to, to really connect and put up some big numbers, that's looking like a pretty favorable matchup. So... You know, look for the Bears to develop the run quick overall in the game, and if they could burn the Buccaneers on some some deep play action plays, that'd be extremely helpful. Man, I'm I'm looking. You know, again, I'm a little bit obsessed with stats here. Um, Tom Brady is leading the league in like basically every friggin' passing category there is. Uh, he's he's leading the league in passing yards. He's number two in touchdowns, only behind uh, Patrick Mahomes. He's got 17, and he's already thrown over 2,000 yards with only three interceptions uh, with, with a completion percentage of, of approaching 70%. Just, just insane. So, um, yeah, man, the, the Bucks are going to be one hell of a team. God bless it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be it's gonna be a tough game for the Bears, and I think that, you know, as far as – you know, their chances of going ahead to beat this team, they're going to have to be fortunate and probably force a couple turnovers, hopefully get multiple sacks on Tom Brady and just, you know, really slow down their offense. I mean, that's going to be 100% crucial. Um, and, you know, the Bears are going to have to probably get close to 30 points to try to, to try to win this. I mean, I don't know, uh, especially if the offense cannot stay on the field long, this defense is going to get burnt out and it's going to give Brady far too many chances to um, you know, to catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Sacks are going to be the key to the game. No doubt. Um, without a key mix and Robert Quinn, good luck. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we got, we got some other guys in there that, that are promising, but I mean, our secondary ain't going to do much. Uh, you know, I, I will say though, Hey, Eddie Jackson, if you're listening, this is, this is your week to step up, man. This is, yeah. we're going to, we're in all likelihood, we're going to really need you this game. And, uh, if you don't show up, we're we're gonna hurt. We're gonna hurt because because Brady's gonna know this and he's gonna he's gonna throw it over the top and you know there's not many people there to stop him. So uh, big big week for Eddie Jackson I think is coming up. Uh, he could he could play a vital role or he could just disappear as he's done for like the last seven weeks. That could happen as well. <laughs> uh, hopefully the former. I take it you got the Bears losing this game. Oh, I I think you'd be you'd be a little crazy to not have them losing this week. Yeah. Uh it's it's just like look, they're the the Bucks are like a top four team in the NFL, pretty much hands down. Uh it's it's hard to say that these guys won't be in the the divisional championship game barring injury, you know, considering that that if they're at full health, uh they just have too much talent. Uh, I, I don't think that they're going to be blown out by 14 points. That seems like our defense is just too too tough overall and really hasn't given up these big, devastating losses to to really almost any team yet, maybe except for the, the Browns. The Browns was amazing, amazing. But that was, that was also uh, Fields' first start. We couldn't get anything going offensively. Yeah. It's not like the Browns had a forty-five point game. They scored right. twenty-six. You know, so I think I think we hold we hold them to a reasonable score. If I if I had to to guess uh, scoring predictions, I could see the Bucks. The Bucks are an explosive offensive team. I could see these guys putting up thirty, um, and I could honestly see us putting up twenty-one. So my 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 
prediction will be, yeah, I'd say I'll say 31-21, something like that. All right, I'll go 35-24. Um, with the Bucks, you know, punching it into the end zone five times, just just barely missing that that twelve yeah, point. Yeah, exactly. I'm going that. right for the under on that one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a real tough matchup, and I think it's a game that's going to give us, you know, a little bit of clarity. It's going to give us a lot of topics for us to cover to cover next week. And there really was a lot going on with the Bears, but at the same time, there really wasn't that much. Um, like you said, we're really at the crucial kind of midpoint of the season where the main yeah. thing that, that matters is game results. Uh, there's not a lot of free agency movement, and we're not quite to the trade deadline yet, but we're starting to get those building blocks that are going to give us you know, a lot more insights as to what's going to go on for the rest of this year and also you know, looking ahead to next year into the draft and, and things like that. So, yeah, anything else you got for for this coming week? If not, we'll we'll end the misery of a of a podcast after losing to the Packers and you know not so positive matchup against the Buccaneers. No, that's that's pretty much it. I, you know, as I mentioned a couple times, I just think this is going to be this is a very very important stretch of games for the Bears. Us losing the Packers kind of set the tone for I think unfortunately set the tone for kind of where we're heading, which is a developmental year. Um, if it was a tighter loss, maybe this conversation would be a bit more optimistic. Let's say, you know, Robinson does come down with that. It's a 21, 24 game. Uh, the, 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 the dialogue shifts right now. We're right. well, that was a winnable game. We lost by 10. They just outplayed us on every level. Uh, it, it's hard to, to say, you know, oh, we had a good run game. Yeah. Well, so did they. And, uh, you know, there's there's really no facet of the game we played better than the Packers did. Um, maybe uh, maybe we rushed a little bit better, but even then, I, I don't think so. I think <laughs> salt the, the in the Packers, wound, Zach. Salt in the wound. <laughs> it's it's true. I mean, they 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 sacked us four or five times. Yeah, uh, yeah. You know, great. So did you know? We got we got two or three sacks. Like doesn't matter. I think they beat us everywhere. So and that's just what it is. Like you know, I know I'm throwing salt into the to the overly dried up wound already that's been carved open and open you know repeatedly by me and a little <laughs> bit but uh it just is what it is man you know i i i think we got to be i try and think like ryan pace or like a madden player like how can we how can we situate this team to be best in the long term and uh the, this three week stretch here packers bucks and then kind of heading into the to the niners right before the trade deadline because because those are going to be the only games we have before the trade deadline which i think is on november 4th um, then we play the Steelers on the eighth. This is it. I mean, we have two more yep. games to test our players, see where we're at, and see where our win loss column is. We already started that stretch with a loss and a pretty bad loss, ten point loss. If we come away with another loss here against the Bucks, it it kind of just only solidifies things further. And uh, and man, a loss to the Niners, I think, one hundred percent solidifies the conversation that we are rebuilding and that we have zero chance this year. Uh, we come away with two wins, and I, it's it's totally different. So really, really important couple of weeks here. Really must-watch football for Bears fans. Uh, I couldn't be more excited for Sunday. I wish it was tomorrow. <laughs>